Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now, today we're finally going to tackle contrast, because wow oh boy, everybody's been asking me about contrast. <laughs> uh, am I going to do videos? Are we going to see it? Yes, and of course. Uh, I just had to wait until my paints arrived, same as everybody. But I got to say, I'm pretty impressed with the results that they've given me so far. Now, this chappy here, he might not look the most astounding cowboy you've ever seen, but he took 10 minutes. And therein lies the real power of these things. Um, I've been pretty pleased with how easily they cover. And I'll talk a little bit about that as I actually get into the painting side of things. There's also not too many colors on the chap, so much has been made of the price. And, you know, per milliliter, they are the most expensive paint product out there at the moment, uh, short of gold leaf or something, I'm sure. But the fact that they are also your shade and a highlight in one, I don't know. I think you are using less of it than people seem to think. Uh, a lot of this one thick coat, it is good for marketing, but it's also not entirely accurate for their usage, which I think sells them a little short as a result. But you'll get to see exactly how they go on. So I've prepared this little dude here. He is from North Star Miniatures. Uh, I love their stuff, eh? Really cool little miniatures, full of character. And I thought, hey, let's give it a shot. So I'm going to go through all of the paints that I've used. And without any further mucking around, let's get a look at the method. Now to start with, I've primed the miniature with the Wraith Bone Spray. And much has been made about the special qualities that these primers supposedly have. Apparently they're much smoother, which allows the contrast paints to do their thing over that primer layer. And I'll be honest with you, I think that's so far turned out to be true. I have discovered that uh, when doing a Corax white primer, if you give it a light, um, like a varnish or something over the top, similarly to how I did with the Empress Spears Marine, you get to smooth out the surface a little bit and you'll get a similar effect to what you would with these contrast primers. They're really good though. The colour is similar to Army Painter's Skeleton Bone, maybe a little bit brighter. If you were to look at something in a pot which would match this, Screaming Skull is probably the closest that you're going to get. Now this actually went on really smoothly. Um, it was, you know, ideal conditions, but the priming itself, super simple, and it's a really nice colour. I would quite happily use this for a few things, to be honest, even if I weren't painting with contrast. But let's get started. Now, some will recommend that you start by painting from the inside out. Uh, so, you know, lower areas on the miniature, smaller ones and that sort of thing. Whereas some will suggest that you paint darker colors first, because with these contrast paints, you'll find that uh, dark colors cover very, very well, but it does make cleanup a little bit difficult. So what you do is you start with your dark colors, any oops moments, you then go ahead and use a little bit of the, the primer color to fix it up. And then you can paint the areas, the lighter areas, and again, but I'm going to start with the light stuff because ooh, I'm feeling brave and I've got here a little bit of skeleton hoard. Now they recommend you use your palette to sort of get an idea of how much you're going to leave behind, but with a bit of practice, you're going to find that you don't need to do that. So all I'm going to do as neatly as possible is cover over all of his shirt with one layer of this contrast color. Now what you'll find, and this is something I discovered very early on, uh, people have been sort of crowing about, oh no, contrast is going to be the the death of skill, <laughs> is something I saw somewhere. And I've got to say, it's just absolutely not true. Uh, one of the most difficult things about working from a very bright undercoat like this is brush control. So with the contrast in particular, you want to make sure that your paint is only going where you want it. And hey, brush control is a skill to practice. So there is a shirt done. <laughs> we'll leave that for just a couple of minutes because we've got an area away from that that we're going to paint next. Now what I've got is some Gilliman flesh. And what I'm going to paint is all of his skin, obviously enough, but anywhere that's also going to be a darker color later on, which is close to the skin. So I'm just going to paint his, his mustache and his hair in with this stuff as well, because I'm going to go over it in a few minutes with a different color that will help even that out. So I want to be careful when I get to where the edge of the jacket is, for example. That over his face. Ta-da, you know that's done. So I'm going to do his ankles and his shoes in the same way. And let's just 
cover over his hand. You'll see very quickly what the difference in uh, primers will do for you. Like if you are painting with a white primer, you'll get quite a washed out skin tone. I haven't tried the flesh over um, gray sear, you know, the gray primer, but I imagine it would look fairly different. So let's just take our time, finish this off, being as neat as possible. Now while his face and hair are drying, we can move down the model and we'll do his trousers. Now I've got Basilicanum Grey, and this actually covers fairly well over this uh, wraith bone. So you don't need to be terribly careful until you reach the edges of any different areas of colour. So take your time when you reach anywhere that you've already painted, or that you're going to paint a different colour, and you'll find it does most of that highlighting work for you. Now again, while that is drying, we can be careful and go on to our next colour. So I've got a Garros Dunes here, and a slightly bigger brush. Um, you can carry on using your medium layer brush, but I've got one here that's similar to the old um, base coat brushes, and it is pretty good. So all you're doing, same thing again, really just chucking this stuff on. But like I said, it's not as simple as that. You are looking to be quite careful when you come to edges. That's your... That's your main difference between this and, I guess, my usual style of painting. <laughs> and now again, thinking of ways that we can speed things up, I'm going to paint his hair with Gore Grunter fur and his little shoes as well, because these are areas that are not currently bordering anything that is wet. So just a quick layer of that down on his shoes, and at the same time, if you're careful, you can go over some of the Gilliman flesh and this is much easier to do, as always, without the camera in the way. <laughs> but by layering some of these colors, you're going to get a slightly different effect depending on where you put them. So that can be a quite good way to get extra mileage out of these colors. Now I do want to quickly point out, if I flip him around and we look at the back of his jacket, you see these little bitty bits where the contrast has collected in areas that I wouldn't necessarily have wanted it to. What that's come from is the surface, the metal surface of this miniature, when I primed it, I probably should have given it a varnish over the top. Uh, some of these older miniatures, you know, you do want to try and give them a little bit more care to get the best out of these paints. But I think overall, he's not looking too bad at the moment. Now I've got some, this is Snakebite Leather. And I love this colour, eh? Those of you old stalwarts who remember Snakebite Leather, watch this, watch this, watch this. It's the same colour. It's back. So I'm going to paint his hat. <laughs> it's Snakebite Leather. Now for any details that you want a nice deep leather, uh, Saigor Brown is a fantastic colour for that. So let's just not have too much on my brush there. And carefully paint in his gun belt. And then finally we're going to put a little bit of Blood Angels Red on his mask. Now the total record time, sorry, record time on this so far has been seven minutes. And paint time, I have not cut away a great deal. You're looking maybe 10 minutes to have done this fella to this kind of standard. So when they talk about does contrast speed up your painting, oh yes, oh yes it can. Now in theory, you could stick to the contrast paints and use maybe Basilicanum Grey or Black Templar to paint in this gun. But my preference is to match, you know, the weapons and some of the other guys I've got so far. So I'm going to use a little bit of Lead Belcher as the classic method, as they say. <laughs> and then just a wee splash of non oil to shade it. And then there we have it, our gunslinger is complete. Now this took 10 minutes, and that is including drying time, because like you've seen, I was going from one area that was wet and painting an area that I had to do yet, and just alternating between, you know, top and bottom of the miniature. It might take a little bit of practice to get the best of that, but hey, Goodness me, you know, <laughs> is he gorgeous? Well, no, and you could do better from here. Um, the beauty of the contrast paints is that if I wanted to, I could now go ahead, highlight his skin, I could do a little more with his trousers, maybe glaze them blue for a sort of a denim effect, but that, that's beside the point. If you are just getting started, like say you are a kid or a beginner coming to this for the first time, and you've never painted before, look at that. And I mean that quite genuinely, 
that would look cool if that's your first miniature. The really important skill that you're going to end up practicing as a result of this is brush control. And whether you are using contrast for the rest of your life, or if you do decide you want to look at other means and tools, other different paints, brush control is key. All right. So this, I, I just, I really like it. Um, like I said, there's a few bits that you could pick on, you could do better, but have a play with them, guys. I think as far as how they were advertised, you know, this is going to speed up your, your painting. This is going to get things battle ready. Hell yeah. You know, 10 minute cowboy. That's, that's damn cool. So what I'm going to do now, because these contrast paints are quite, um, I guess, soft, I'm not quite sure how to put it, but you do need to varnish them once they're finished like this. So I'm going to go ahead and varnish them and then I'll pop a base on them. And ironically, the drying time on the basing material is going to be longer than it took to paint the damn model. So we'll come back and have a look at that once we've got that done. Now with the varnish and his base applied, our cowboy is finished. And you can quite happily put him on the table like that. Uh, no exaggeration, I'm quite happy to play games with that. You know, I think the, the tagline that it's better than grey plastic or bare metal is absolutely accurate. <laughs> as much as there are a bunch of little things you could do, um, I'm pretty pleased with that result overall. You know, easy wins. That's what I'm always talking about. But let's, before we go to, you know, fade out, let's have a look. What would happen if, for example, I just grabbed some screaming skull and did some highlights on his jacket? Well, he might then look a little bit like that. What if I were to get some bell or brown and do a couple of little highlights on his hat? What about just a little bit of Reichland flesh shade to bring that skin down and introduce a little more depth to it? What if I did a 50-50 mix of Drakenhof Nightshade and Lamian Medium and I just put that over his trousers? Or a tiny touch of squig orange just to highlight his uh, cloth there? Or a little Kislev flesh to highlight his skin again? What if any number of things? Now for comparison, here is one that I painted. Uh, this is a 3D printed miniature that I did from a Corax white primer. And he is, like the other fella here, only contrast. Um, I actually haven't highlighted any of him. This is all using paints from that same range. So there is tons you can do with this, guys. I've been really impressed with it. And I think this is the, the start of something really exciting. We're going to be able to do some really interesting things with these paints in the future. So grab hold of them, I reckon, and uh, have a play around. See what you like the look of. I'm sure if you can pop into a store that sells them, they'll let you have a little bit of a play around <laughs> and see what you think. So as always, guys, feel free to drop a comment in the old box below. My Twitter and Facebook are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time and you guys enjoy the rest of your day.